There's one more. Let's shoot him. Yes. One more. I cannot get him. I gotta get him. Yes, I have him. Hello world, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to add some TypeScript to our Unity project to shoot some zombies. So here we go. Before we get into the code, I have to tell you, you should go over to my Twitch channel and follow me there as well. I stream on Monday and Thursday, 9 p.m. Central European time, and we build projects like this live. You can ask anything you want. So, well, go over there after the video and I'll see you there. Let's go to Unity now. Let's start by having a quick look at the scene I created. It's kind of inspired by the Brokehaven project, a VR game where you have to shoot zombies standing in the middle of a park. Um, so I created this little park here using the Humble Bundle uh, presets I mentioned in an earlier video. And I placed some zombies around and the idea is we're going to have the controls and shoot these zombies. Now in this video, we're not going into moving the zombies around. That's something for the next time, but I did create Something similar we did in an earlier video with two controllers here that are set up in such a way, if we go to the camera here, that they are used as custom prefabs. Now these controllers are just little guns and I will show them in VR in a second. To add a script, I'm going to add a new scripts folder to my project. Let me get in here and we're going to create a new Babylon script editor component in C Sharp. And this script is basically the layer between our Unity project and our TypeScript code. So let's call this shoot. So now we have a C Sharp file. Wait for a second for it to compile, otherwise, we might get into issues. Shouldn't take too long now, there we are. Now I'm going to add a, another script. It's going to be a TypeScript and I'm going to add a mesh component. This is the one you most likely use. And it's comparable to the normal um, mono behaviors from Unity. And this is a TypeScript file. Now easiest way is to name them both the same. Um, that way the generator will generate the right, right code for you. So if we go to VS Code now, I can show you what this looks like. Double click, should open VS Code. There we go. This is the generated editor script, the C Sharp part. There's a header in here, and this is a property added by the Babylon exporter. And this marks a property as being usable from your TypeScript code. There's also this Babylon class and this is the reference to your TypeScript code. So you need to have a module, in this case project, with a class shoot, and that's bound to this component or anything you use this component on. If we switch to the TypeScript code, we get a file that looks similar to the default mono behaviors you have in your Unity projects with the lifecycle you can hook into. And this is just where we're going to add some more code in a second. So right here in the start method is where we're going to add a handler for changes on the controllers. So when a controller is loaded, we can attach some code to that so we can uh, find the triggers. So if we go into the manager and there is a web VR property here. And on there we have, for example, the on controller mesh loaded observable. It's pretty long, but it's the one we need. And when we add some code here, we can add a handler for this observable. So when this changes, in other words, a controller mesh is loaded, then we need to add something to that controller mesh to be able to shoot things. So we have an event data object, an event state object. Let's create an arrow function for this. Now this event data contains all kinds of stuff for your WebVR controller. And there's also this event state, which we are not going to use in this case. Now, in this object is, for example, information um, about which hand is loaded. It can be the right hand, can be the left hand. Um, but there's also information in here on the button, or the buttons. Um, for example, the trigger. So we need to look at the trigger state when that change, changes, 
we're going to add another piece of code we're going to run when the state of the trigger is changed um so we need some code for handling the button data we also need to add a button state which we're not going to use in this case and now we need to go and check if the button data press which means the button does something and button data value is equal to one button value is a value between zero and one just the amount of uh, pressure you put on the trigger on the controller in this case you want to have fully pressed it like a real trigger you pull the trigger and then you shoot some zombies and at this point we're going to cast a ray which is pretty simple to do because there is a special function on the event data coming from the controller uh, and then we need to ray and then we say it's equal to event data get forward ray this is just straightforward array now we need to give this a distance so for now let's do five so it's five meters ahead we shoot something and something that might really help when working with the, these rays is visualize them now, luckily inside babylon there is a ray helper and this can create and show a line in your scene that represents the ray so this is the ray we're going to visualize we also need to add the scene it's this scene and we can give it a color so if we do babylon color 3 there are some methods in here for example red and this will return the color red so now we can shoot red rays inside our scene let's save this this will be the first code we're going to run inside our vr scene to see if we can visualize the rays now we need to go back to unity and drag these shoot code on the controllers. Now we see the script here. It still says hello world. Um, we can change that and remove that. And you can see it has the Babylon class project shoot also here set. And we need to export the code. So we go in our into our exporter and just build and preview the entire scene and this will only take a few seconds other than when you are building a web gl scene in unity which can take up to a half an hour for a very simple scene this only takes 10 seconds so let's switch over to vr and i'll show you what it looks like so the scene is loaded i'm going to switch into the scene so here we have the two guns and now when i shoot we should see a ray flying into the sky and we have on both guns and since we're just using ray forward we always have the forward direction so we can look around and start shooting towards now as you can see the rays are not going far enough to actually hit the zombies but this is a great way of debugging and see where your rays are going and if they're long enough let's change the rays and see if we can detect what zombies we hit okay so we're back in unity and what i want to do is add a property to my C sharp component where we can set the distance or the length of the ray and use that in our TypeScript code to be able to just set the distance of which we can uh, shoot the zombies. Let's switch over to the C sharp code and we're going to change this default uh, Babylon property into something useful. So let's do distance and set the default to something like 10. Now we can also use just the normal um, unity properties here for example to create a slider for this integer we say we want 0 to 1500 just guessing something I save this and we don't need to add something special any more than this Babylon property attribute being able to use it inside unity uh, Babylon so let's wait for this code to compile and we should see a slider here or we can set the distance we can just change it for example to uh, let's set this to 50 let's put 50 there we need to do the same for the other hand otherwise they're different now we need to have to read out this property inside babylon let's go to our 
TypeScript code inside the start function, I'm going to say this. I'm going to add a new property. Let's call this distance as well. We say this get property. And here we give it the name of the property we want to read. Inside a string, call this distance. Now by default, this will return any, but when we create a local property for this up here and we say number, this will automatically convert this property to a number. Comment it correctly. Now we need to um, change this five to this distance. So now we are just using the property from Unity inside this code for the distance. Now, before we can detect which zombie we hit, I need to show you something I did in Unity. So if we select one of the zombies, you see there is a component tag here. This is a Babylon exporter script, and it adds a tag. And this tag is handled in such a way we can query for it in our scene. So it's different than the normal Unity tags. So we need to add this one as well. And to be able to detect what zombie we hit, we also need to have a box collider, which is just a basic, uh, normal Unity box collider. There is one catch in this case. There is a little, I think it's a bug. Um, the center is not exported of the box collider. So if you change this, it will revert to 000, which is at the bottom of the object. So you need to double this size to be able to get the whole zombie in this case. Let me zoom in. So you see, it extends into the ground. That's because you cannot change this and it's always at the bottom. Now inside the code, let's remove the creation of the ray. I'll leave it in here. If we need to debug later, we can just uncomment it and we have it uh, running again. We need to have a list of all the zombies in the scene. This scene, get message by tags. And there is some more to than this than just a string. You can create a whole query. But if you just do zombies, we just have a list of all the zombies. We get the meshes that have that tag zombie in it. Now we need to find a way to check the intersection of array with what zombie we hit. So let's create a new property picked. And then we say ray. There's an intersect with meshes. You can check all kinds of different things. One mesh or multiple meshes in one go. And we just need to check that array of zombies we had. Now all that is left is just iterating over ice zero less than picked length. We're going to iterate over all the meshes or objects that are returned by this intersect meshes and if we hit something let's just destroy it let's just remove the zombie from the scene so we do that by going to into the manager and say save destroy and then we say picked i which is the current one we iterate over it might, it could be one, could be more. And then picked mesh is the mesh we hit with the ray. And that's it for removing the zombies. Now we could go deeper at this point by triggering all the animations and do all kinds of crazy stuff. But I think that's going a bit too deep for this video. We might do that in, in another one. So let's run this in VR. And I made a typo here. I typed zombies. It should be zombie. Now with that code fixed, let's get into VR and see if it works. So I reloaded the scene. Now we can go back into VR. Should be able to shoot them. So that one is probably out of range. I cannot hit him. This one, let's shoot him. They're probably all out of range. So, and, oh, I can't hit him. Take that as a clown. Let's kill them all. There's one more. Let's shoot him. Yes. Oh, one more. I cannot get him. I gotta get him. Yes, I have him. As you can see, there are a few things to keep in mind when writing your TypeScript for your Unity and Babylon.js projects. 
In the next video, we'll probably get into some navigation meshes and see if we can have zombies or anything walk around the scene as well. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, and leave your comments down below. I'll see you on the next one. Have a great day and stay safe.